Hi, this is Dr. Bricker here with some hints for homework number seven, which is over chapter 18. This is the uh, geometric optics chapter. Things like mirrors, lenses, uh, refraction, reflection. So let's see, uh, let's see the first one here. We have a 5.3 foot tall girl stands on level ground. The sun is 29 degrees above the horizontal. How long is her shadow? And we'll, we'll find a lot of this is doing in some trig. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so here's a rough picture. Um, I'm representing the girl as this arrow here, 5.3 meters, or sorry, 5.3 feet tall. The sun is at uh, a certain angle in the sky. I believe in my problem it's 29 degrees. You'll have to, to check yours. And then we want to know how long is the uh, girl's shadow. So if this is the girl, this part is the shadow, the length here. So as I said, a lot of this is doing some uh, trig and geometry, that sort of thing. So from this triangle here, the tangent of theta is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So a little bit of more algebra here, you can get the length of the shadow. So uh, 5.3 feet divided by tangent of theta. So yes, a lot of, a lot of uh, trigonometry in these problems. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, so the next one we have a light ray coming in here. So a uh, ray of light impinges on a mirror as shown in this picture. A second mirror is down here. Uh, after striking both mirrors, at what angle relative to the incoming ray does the outgoing ray emerge? So this ray is going to come in, it's going to reflect from this surface, then it's going to reflect from this surface. And we want to know the angle relative to the first uh, ray. So if this ray is going this way relative to the first ray, which way does the second ray head out? So we'll have to carefully draw a picture and try to figure this out. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's the picture that I have. This ray comes in at 35 degrees. We want to know um, what's going on after it hits this surface and that surface. So one thing to remember is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So if this ray comes in and this is 35 degrees, this one also has to be the same thing. Really, this is the angle of incidence. This is the angle of reflection. They're always measured from the normal to the surface. But if this is equal to this, that means that this one's going to be equal to this one. So this is 35 degrees, this angle here, because it's the same as this angle. And then this is a right angle, so this one's got to be 65 degrees for it to add up to 180. So again, this is 35, so this one's got to be 35. This is 90 degrees because they tell you that it is. So this one is 65. This one's got to head back out like this. Um, if I did the math right, maybe it's uh, 55 actually. 55, right? Has to add up to, uh, to 90. So if that's 35, this one is 55. Same thing here, this one's got to be 55, so that makes this one 35. So this one came in this way, this one's heading out the same way. So the angle between the incident ray and the reflected ray, the angle between this one and this one, are 180, they're exactly opposite. So if a ray comes in like this, it's going to head back out the same direction, or opposite direction, I should say. There's 180 between this one and this one. So the answer is 180 degree difference. Okay, and again, um, some geometry and a little bit of trig going on here. There's not really a formula for this problem. You just have to know that the incident ray and the reflected ray have the same angle when they hit a surface like this. Okay, let's see. An underwater diver sees the sun 60 degrees above the horizontal. How high in the sky above the horizontal to a fisherman in a boat? Let's see. How high is the sun above the horizontal to a fisherman in a boat above the diver? Is the sun. Let me read it one more time. How high is the sun above the horizontal to a fisherman in a boat uh, above the diver? We definitely need a picture for this one, so let's take a look at it. Okay, so here's a diver down here. This is the eye of the diver looking up. And to the diver, it seems like the sun is here, 60 degrees with respect to the horizontal. 
but as you know from this chapter when light enters uh, goes from one medium to the next enters a different medium light is refracted or in other words bent so the Sun isn't really up here the ray would have had to have come from this direction so the Sun is really over here to the diver it seems like the Sun is over here because the way that you perceive this is light going in a, a straight line you can't tell that it's curved so the Sun's not really here the Sun is over here and then uh, light comes in and it's bent uh, towards the normal so remember all these formulas that we have for optics are for our uh, relative to the normal so here's the normal to the surface you know perpendicular to the surface okay so uh, the Sun's not really up here to the diver it seems like it's up here the light ray has come in this direction hit the interface between air so this is air index of refraction 1 this is water index of refraction 1.33 and then uh, the light ray is bent towards the normal so the Sun is really here so um, let's use Snell's law to actually solve this problem all right let's take a look at this picture so the 60 degree angle is this one that's not what we need for uh, for Snell's law though we need this angle remember measured uh, relative to the uh, to the normal so if this is 60 this one here which I'm gonna call theta 1 it's got to be 30 uh, I don't want to call it theta 1 actually you'll see why in a minute let me just call this angle 30 degrees and then this angle here which I'm gonna call theta 2 has got to be 30 degrees right this is 30 degrees uh, this is also 30 degrees now to use Snell's law this is this is really theta 1 that's why I don't want to call that one theta 1 to confuse things this one is theta 1 for Snell's law so if this is the ray coming in this is the normal uh, this is theta 1 in Snell's law formula formula this is theta 2 in Snell's law really um, what they're asking for is this angle Phi but if I can get theta 1, uh, 90 minus theta 1 will give me phi, and then I can solve for phi. So let me write Snell's law down. We can talk about it a little bit more. So n1 sine of theta 1 is n2 sine of theta 2. So n1 is the index of refraction of air. Um, theta 1 is the angle of the incident ray measured relative to the normal. So that's why that's theta 1. Uh, equal to n2 index of refraction of this medium sine of theta 2 again measured from the normal so I can use this to figure out theta 1 I know everything I know this I know this I know this so you can figure out theta 1 I'll just put dot 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 theta 1 is equal to and then once you get theta 1 phi is equal to 90 minus theta 1 okay very good so if you're a diver here and you think the Sun is up here and you think you have plenty of time really the Sun is lower in the sky than you realize okay let's look at the next one okay in this problem we have a 4.9 meter wide uh, swimming pool filled to the top the bottom of the pool becomes completely shaded in the afternoon when the Sun is 21 degrees above the horizontal so kind of similar to what we did before just a slightly different picture so let's take a look at that okay so here's the incident ray coming in from the Sun uh, hits the boundary between the water which is in the pool this is the pool surface and then it's refracted or bent towards the normal so again this is the uh, this is the normal to the surface so this ray comes in and it's bent towards the normal so uh, anything uh, here is dark it's not receiving any sunlight at all and we want to figure out the depth of this so what we could use Snell's law for in this problem so refraction problem thinks Snell's law n incident sine of theta incident that's not theta incident this is theta incident uh, measured from the normal again is equal to and refracted sine of theta refracted right this is the 
refracted angle measured from the normal. So you have to get in the habit of, of doing that. Many times these problems give you the incorrect, uh, I shouldn't say incorrect, they don't give you the angle that goes along with Snell's law. Snell's law, this formula, is measured from the normal to the surface. So many times they'll give you a different angle. In this problem, they gave you, gave you this angle. So to get the incident angle, you'd actually do 90 minus this angle to give you theta incident. So why am I doing this? If I can get this refracted angle here, and I know this uh, dimension, I can get the, uh, the height here. So first thing to do, you have everything else. You have this, this, and this. This is air, so incident is index of refraction is 1. Down here, uh, refracted part 1.33 because it's water. So you can figure out, uh, I'll put dot dot dot, do some algebra, figure out the refracted angle. And then once you have the refracted angle, you can figure out this depth. So here's a refracted angle. You know this side, you're trying to figure out that side. So it looks like the tangent of theta will come into play there, right? Tangent of this angle would be this over this. So I'll, I'll leave it to you to, to finish that part up. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, next one. A thin glass rod is submerged in oil. What is the critical angle for light traveling in this uh, rod? Okay, so we'll have to remember what critical angle is. We'll take a look at that. Let's see uh, if they give us the index of refraction of glass and oil. It's in the chapter, but let's just see if we can find it here. So here's a section from the chapter. We can take a look at it. So what I'm trying to figure out is the index of refraction of glass and the index of refraction of oil because I'll need that for this. Uh, for this. Okay, so let me scroll through the section and I bet I come up with this. Whoops, hit the wrong button. So there should be a little table of indices of refraction. Ah, here we go. So uh, oil, 1.46. I will need that. And then glass. Typical glass, 1.50. OK, so this is uh, fiber optics that we're talking about. Let's look at, uh, let's sketch this out. OK, so this, this idea of critical angle it's when you have an index of refraction that is uh, like glass here, 1.5. So this index of refraction is greater than the uh, media that is surrounding it. And you can get this to happen. So here's the idea. A light ray comes in. None of it leaves. It's bent at the surface. You know, when you go from higher to lower, you, you are bending away from the normal. So light rays would come in here and go right along a surface at the critical angle. Remember, this is measured from the normal to the surface. So anything bigger than the critical angle, that light definitely stays in. So that's what fiber optics is. You, you send light down this uh, glass tube, and it just stays in there. This is used in a lot of different things, communications. It's also used for uh, if you do an operation and you have a thin glass rod and you want to maybe mount the camera on it, and you're maybe investigating uh, in some kind of surgical situation and you need some light, this glass could be used as a fiber optic uh, cable and you can send light here and it'll just stay right inside here. So anything greater than the critical angle, light is definitely going to stay in. So the critical angle is where light comes in and it stays right across the surface. So this is a special case of Snell's law. So in this case I have uh, using Snell's law, index of refraction of glass, sine of theta critical is index of refraction of oil, and then the sine of 90 degrees, because this is 90 degrees here. So this is really Snell's law, but this it's a special case of Snell's law. And then you know the sine of 90 degrees is 1. So sine of theta critical would be n of oil divided by and of glass. And then again, the sine of 90 is 1. And then you can figure out what the critical angle would be. And then anything at the critical angle or greater will definitely stay in. Like, for example, if 
this light comes in greater than the critical angle, it's going to go back down this way. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, so we have an object 30 centimeters in front of a converging lens with a focal length of 10. Use ray tracing to determine the location of the image. And then is the image upright or inverted? Okay, good. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so they're telling us the object distance, that's S, is 30 centimeters. The focal length is 10 centimeters. And we're trying to figure out where the object is located and if it's real or inverted. Okay, so um, also in this chapter is the lens maker's equation. So this ray tracing idea is helpful as kind of a backup. Probably you'll end up using the uh, lens maker's equation and then you can kind of see if it makes any sense with the uh, with this ray tracing idea. So here's the focal point and there's one on each side as you know. So if we put the object over here at 30 centimeters so this is the object. We are outside of the uh, of the focal length. So whenever that happens, whenever you're outside of the focal length, the image is going to be uh, real, and then it's real and inverted always go together. There's a few other choices, but real and inverted go together. Um, upright and um, virtual go together. So virtual and upright go together and real and inverted go together. If an object is if an image is real it's inverted. If it's upright then it's it's virtual. So we can use ray tracing to do this. It only takes two of these uh, rays to figure out where this is actually located, but this is the idea with ray tracing. Um, a ray that goes uh, through the center of the lens just keeps going like this. Um, a ray that comes in parallel to the lens, so this one's coming in parallel, goes through the focal point. So where those cross, that's where the image is actually formed. And then a third one that you can use, and if you do this really carefully you can get a nice answer, but a ray that leaves here, goes through the focal point, comes out parallel. So where all those uh, rays hook up, that's where the uh, the image is located. And you can see it turns out to be inverted and real. So if you had an object here, here's a lens, you put a little uh, note card or something here, you would actually see the image. So one that you can actually see, one that's actually formed by rays intersecting, is a real image. And a real and inverted always go together. So if you did this really carefully, you could figure out where it's located. We'll use the, the lens maker's equation. 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f. And we're trying to figure out s prime here. So 1 over s prime, 1 over f minus 1 over s. So we've got uh, 1 over 10 minus 1 over 30. So 1 over 10 minus 1 over 30. This would be uh, 3 over 30 minus 1 over 30, if I did this right. Good. And you get uh, 2 over 30 centimeters, or 15 centimeters, when you uh, invert it. This is 1 over s prime, by the way. So you can actually see it. So 1 over s prime is equal to 2 over 30. So s prime turns out to be, you know, inverted 30 over 2, or 15 centimeters. So the fact that s prime turns out to be positive, so s prime positive means real, and real always means inverted. Okay, that's another way of telling. If the sign of s prime is positive, you can get it's real and inverted. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, so in this one, an object is six centimeters in front of a converging lens, the same kind of lens we just had, with the focal length of 10 centimeters. So now the object is actually inside the focal length. So this is a little more difficult to do with ray tracing, but it's definitely doable. And with this setup, we'll see that we're going to get a completely different type of image. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's the converging lens. Here's the focal length, 10 centimeters, and I'm within the focal length. 
So by within it, I mean here's the focal length, here's the lens, I'm in between the focal length and the lens. So we'll get a completely different kind of image, and you'll see that in just a minute. So really they're asking, you know, where is the, uh, where is the image located? So ray tracing is a little more difficult here, but it's definitely doable. Uh, the one that goes through the center would still go through the center. The one that comes in parallel would still go through the focal point. But if you can see, it's hard to see maybe from here. These are not crossing. They are actually spreading out as they go farther apart. The one that would appear to come through the focal point would head out parallel. So these rays are all diverging. You would not actually see an object over here. But the way that your eye works, if you could trace these rays back, they actually would cross. And that's where the image is formed. Where does it appear that the rays come from? So this, uh, when this happens, when the rays actually don't cross, when they appear to come from somewhere, you get a virtual image. And virtual images are always upright. In the last example, we had a real inverted image. Here, it's a virtual upright image. Let's use the lens maker's equation again and see what we get for s prime. So same thing, 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is 1 over f. By the way, for a converging lens, the focal point, focal length is defined to be positive. It doesn't matter in this one. They didn't say anything about it, but just so you know, this is positive. Okay, so we're trying to figure out s prime. So 1 over s prime, 1 over s minus sorry, 1 over f minus 1 over s. So 1 over 10 minus 1 over 6. Okay, so you get, uh, this would be like uh, 6 over 60 minus 10 over 60. So negative 4 over 60 centimeters. That's 1 over s prime. So then uh, invert this. S prime turns out to be negative 60 over 4, or negative 15. Now there is a, something about this negative sign. If S prime is negative, so S prime negative means virtual. And of course, virtual always means upright. So for a converging lens, the, this problem and the previous one, you could get either type of images. You can either get a uh, real inverted if you're outside of the focal point, or you can get a, an upright virtual if you're within the focal point. So this is used as a magnifier. So if you notice here, the uh, image is bigger than the object. Whoops, you couldn't see that. Uh, image bigger than the object. This is a magnifier. Okay, let's look at the next one. So an object is 24 centimeters in front of a diverging lens. Uh, so a diverging lens is a different picture than the um, converging lenses we've been looking at. And the focal length, they're nice, they tell you it's negative 12. So the focal length of a diverging lens is always negative. We want to use ray tracing to figure out the location of the image and a couple other parts here. Um, upright or inverted. So for this type of lens, a diverging lens, you only get one type of image. You only get a virtual upright image. So converging lens, you can get either kind depending on where you put it. Diverging lens, you can only get one type of image. It's, uh, it's upright. And you know if it's upright, it's got to be virtual. So just the fact of knowing it's a diverging lens, you, you can answer B and C right away. Let's try to figure out where this uh, image is actually located. OK, hopefully this looks all right. This, the red lines are from the other side of the piece of paper. But this is a diverging lens. So as you know, when rays come into a diverging lens, they always spread out. So the rays uh, coming from this object are never going to form a real image. You're always going to get a virtual image with a diverging lens. So just in terms of ray tracing, a ray that is going to go uh, come in like this 
parallel to the uh, to the lens is going to diverge and it's going to appear that it's coming from the focal point. Um, the one that's heading through the center, just like before, continues. This is where the image is actually formed, right here. It only takes uh, two rays, but the third ray would be one that is heading towards the focal point here. Heading towards the focal point does this. It comes out parallel, so you can see all these rays are diverging. And you can take this one and trace it back. So I think there's less intuition with a diverging lens just because of the, the way it's set up. You always get this sort of image where you have to trace the rays back. So here's where the uh, image would form. So again, diverging lens, you only ever get an upright virtual um, image. Okay, so here's where it's located. If you were careful, you could actually figure it out use a graph paper, but we could use the lens maker's equation. 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f. We're trying to figure out s prime. Again, you know it's going to have to be negative. The reason is s prime being negative means virtual and upright. And that's the only kind of image you can get here. And you can see why in a minute mathematically why it's always going to be negative. So um, f is always negative and you're subtracting something. s is always positive and you're subtracting it. So s prime always comes out to be negative. So put the numbers in here and you'll see that you, you're going to get a negative number. I'll just do one more step. 1 over, sorry, minus 1 over 12. The focal length is negative 12, so negative 12, you can put the negative sign up there if you want to. Minus 1 over 24. And then you'll see s prime turns out to be negative. And again, uh, virtual and upright, only thing you can get for this type of lens. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, so now we have some mirrors, a convex mirror, like the passenger side rear uh, view mirror on a car, has a focal length of negative 2.6 meters. An object is 5.2 meters in front of the mirror. Use ray tracing to determine the location of the image. Again, if you're really careful, you could do that. Um, is, it, is the image upright or inverted, real or virtual? So just like a diverging lens always gives you an upright virtual image, a convex mirror also only can form one type of image. It's always virtual and it's always upright. So if you notice on your car, the, your driver's side mirror on your door is a different type of mirror than the passenger side one. The reason is you're farther away from the, uh, the passenger side mirror, so we've got to have a different kind of mirror to actually form the image. And uh, if you read it carefully, it'll say something like objects appear closer than they actually are for that reason. We want to be able to see them, but in doing so, we lose perspective on how far away the, uh, the actual car is. So take a look at it next time. You, you'll see that. OK, let's, uh, let's sketch this one out and solve for it. OK, so here's the uh, focal point. I mean, it's uh, defined as negative, but this is still 2.6. This is 2.6. It doesn't have anything to do whether it's on one side or the, the next. There's always one focal point on one side and one on the other. So here's the uh, object. A light ray that's coming in parallel is going to be reflected. So these are, remember, mirrors, so we're having reflection going on. So the one that comes in parallel, uh, we have it's reflected this way. You can trace it back. That's the one that uh, seems like it's coming from the focal point, right? If there, there's a lens, if there's a ray going this way, it seems like it came from the focal point. The one that ray that comes in here to the center is just reflected. Angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection, just like before. Where does it appear to be coming from? So if you tr if you look back, it appears to be coming from here. So that's where the image is actually formed. So if you think about it, all the light that comes in, it's going to be reflected in all different angles. Where does it appear to be coming from? Where does the light appear to be coming from? and that's where the image is formed. Now the ray that would be heading towards the focal point, if I do this carefully, the ray that's heading towards the focal point is reflected uh, out parallel. Where does it seem to be coming from? And you can trace this one back too. Okay, not too bad. And if you did this really carefully on graph paper, you could get a pretty good answer. Just so we have an idea what's going on though. 
Um, we can get an exact answer by looking at the uh, lens maker equation. It still works for mirrors. So um, same thing, 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f. So um, what we want to do is solve for s prime. So I'll leave that to you, solve for s prime here. Now you're going to see that it's going to turn out to be negative and that you'll always get that for this um, convex mirror. This is always going to be negative and it means the same thing as it did for, for lenses. This is uh, virtual and upright. That's the start, sort of image that you have formed. Okay, good. So the uh, point of this is like why are we doing this? Why are we using this kind of mirror? It's taking in a lot more light so you've got a, a greater field of vision. It's taking in all this light and giving you an image there. So when you look at your passenger side mirror that's what's going on here. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, we've got a two centimeter tall object 10 centimeters in front of, so that's the uh, that's the object distance, diverging mirror. So diverging mirror, convex mirror, it's the same exact thing. Converging mirror and concave mirror are the same thing, just different names for the same thing. So the, the one that we just worked on, the, um, the convex mirror, that is a diverging mirror. Same thing, it was just called something else there. Um, they give us the focal length to negative 25, we want to calculate the image position, okay, no problem. Calculate the image height and calculate the image height, okay, good. So let's take a look at this. So it's the same kind of mirror we had before. 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is 1 over f. Now you know s prime is going to have to turn out to be negative because of the fact that it's a diverging mirror. Okay, so uh, 1 over s prime 1 over f minus 1 over s. So 1 over negative 25, or you could write it like this, negative 1 over 25, minus 1 over s, so 1 over 10. Uh, that's what 1 over s prime is. Uh, so this would be like minus 4 over 20, 4 over 100. Again, you could just do this in your calculator if you wanted to. Minus uh, 10 over 100. So this would be a common denominator way of doing it. 4 over 100, that's the same thing as minus 1 over 25. And then minus 1 over 10, which is minus 10 over 100, same thing. So you get uh, minus 16 over 100. That's 1 over s prime. So then to get s prime, uh, take the inverse of that. So 100 divided by 16. 100 divided by 16, 6.25. Don't forget the minus sign. Now we knew it had to be negative because it's that type of, uh, of mirror. Now how high is the actual uh, image that's formed? We haven't seen this yet. This is the magnification formula. So magnification is equal to minus s prime over s and that's equal to h prime over h. So s prime is the image distance, s is the object distance, h prime is the image height, h is the uh, object height. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's look at this. We could actually solve it from this. Don't forget the minus sign there, though. Uh, before we do that, though, magnification positive means the the object is upright, and upright means it's virtual. Magnification, if it comes out to be negative, this means it's uh, inverted. And if it's inverted, you know it's got to be real. Okay, so a lot of these little uh, things you got to keep in mind, they make your life a lot easier solving these problems. Okay, so we're trying to figure out h prime. We can use this. Minus s prime over s is equal to h prime over h. And we're trying to figure out h prime. So h prime, you know, multiply both sides by h minus s prime h over s. Right, I'm trying to figure out this. Multiply both sides by h. So I get minus, there's the minus sign, s prime minus 6.25. 
times h, which they give you in the problem, 2 centimeters, and then divided by s, which was 10 centimeters. So if you notice, the, magnific the height um, of the image is going to come out to be positive, which it should because it, it's got to be upright because it's uh, virtual. So whatever that turns out to be. Uh, let's see, 12.5 over 10, so 1.25 or so. H prime. Okay, hopefully you can see that all right. Okay, good. So you really have to mind, uh, you know, the, the signs here. Let's see if things make sense afterwards. And, of course, they do in this one. H prime turns out to be positive, which it should because it's a uh, it's an upright virtual image. That's the only thing you can get for this kind of mirror. All right, on to the next one. Okay, let me just say a few things about this one without actually doing it. A uh, 2.5 two centimeter tall object. Okay, so that's what H is. That's the object height. 12 centimeters in front of a concave mirror. So a concave mirror is the same thing as a converging mirror. Okay? And it has a focal length of 25, um, 25 centimeters. Calculate the image position. Okay, so same thing as we had before. 1 over S plus 1 over S prime is equal to 1 over F. You have to solve for S prime, which is the uh, image location. And then to calculate the height, do what we just did before. You've got to calculate the height of the image. You have the height of the object. You have h. That's what this is. You have h. They tell you that. Um, you have s. That's 12 centimeters. This part you calculated s prime. So you've got all those things. The only thing you don't have is the image uh, height. So same formula that we used in the previous problem. The only difference in this problem is we have a uh, it's a concave mirror instead of a convex mirror. All right, let's look at the last problem. So a three centimeter tall object. Okay, good. Forty five centimeters in front of a uh, converging mirror. Okay, good. Um, and we know the focal length twenty five. We want to calculate the uh, image position again. So uh, let me just uh, sketch this one out for us. Okay, so we've got this type of mirror, converging mirror. The uh, focal length is 25, and we're located over here at 45. Okay, excellent. So uh, here's what we're given. S is 45. We're outside the focal length. The height of the uh, object, 3 centimeters. By the way, the height's always going to be positive in our problems that we're doing here. We want to calculate where is the image located and how big is the image. Same thing as before, 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f. And we're trying to figure out s prime. So then 1 over s prime, 1 over f minus 1 over s. So 1 over 25 minus 1 over 45. That's 1 over s prime. So here's how I could do that in my calculator. 1 over 25 minus 1 over 45. And then I've got to take the inverse of that. So your calculator will probably be different. But I could just take that and raise it to the negative 1 power. That's taking the inverse of it. Ah, I'm in the wrong mode. So 25 divided by 14, whatever that turns out to be. OK, and then 25 over 14 is 6.1 or so. Oh, sorry, 16.1. Uh, 16.1 centimeters is, is uh, S prime. If you notice, this came out to be positive. So it should because I'm outside the focal point. So I'm inside the focal point would be I'm in between the focal point and the mirror. But I'm not. I'm here. I'm outside. So um, S prime turned out to be positive. That means that I have a real inverted image. Remember, that still works here for, for mirrors, just like it did for lenses. If S prime turns out to be positive, real and inverted. S prime turns out to be negative, that's when you get virtual and upright. Okay, so with that in mind, I want to calculate H prime. And I know H prime has, it better be negative, right, because I'm saying it's inverted. H prime being negative would give me an inverted object. It, or sorry, inverted image. 
So uh, minus s prime over s is h prime over h, and I'm trying to figure out h prime. So uh, as we saw before, h prime is equal to minus s prime h over s. So minus uh, s prime, 16.1, uh, h was 3, and then s was 45. And you see it does come out to be negative, a little bit over 1, which the negative sign just means that it's inverted and inverted and real go together. Okay, excellent. Um, lots of lens makers equations, a lot of refraction, a lot of reflection. So um, if you have any questions, just email me, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.